Now at 10 o'clock, we start with a weather alert. A windy weekend across Arizona. Take a look at this. Strong winds sending tents flying at this special Olympics event this afternoon in Goodyear. Tonight, we are bracing for a triple threat of storms and a big drop in temperatures in a matter of hours. Ginger's tracking the timing. What's popping up right now on radar and what you could expect as you head out the door in the morning. Ginger. Yeah, we are definitely going to feel this winter storm because temperatures are taking a nosedive tomorrow. Radar has However, showing us that, yeah, there's some action out there and trailing the moisture is a lot of cold air parked along the coast. Even deeper than that. Oh boy, you know this is going to be a sizable cool down for us, but there's also a moisture element of that feeding right into the Four Corners region. So tracking it tonight, 10 o'clock. OK, we've got some pop up showers, nothing uh, really substantial, but until about two to four o'clock in the morning, we've got opportunity for rain and then after about five o'clock, it looks like this moisture is going to be lifting and pushing out. However, you know this drill. It's going to rotate around and give us another round of moisture accompanied by some very strong winds, which will take your temperatures from the 80s today to the 60s tomorrow. Details coming up my full forecast. Jonathan. All right, a big change indeed. Ginger, we'll see you in a few minutes. Luke Days is back and bringing excitement to folks of at each and every age. 12 News journalist Jade Cunningham talking with folks who attended who say they are thrilled to have the event back. Whether you are at Luke Air Force Base or in a parking lot. Just the sight of it, seeing the F-35, S-16, C-17s. Eyes were to the sky Saturday. But there they go. As people from all over the valley. I'm a fan of Thunderbirds, actually. <laughs> took in the sights and sounds of Luke days. One was trilling, twisting in the sky, doing hula hoops. The hearing the sound, I can still hear it in my chest, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. The event, usually held every other year, was canceled in 2020 and 2022 because of the pandemic. But this year... Favorite part was my... I got to say her flying that F-35. Was its comeback. It was amazing. Um, the girls had a great time. They saw all the jets and everything, so... She got to go in a helicopter. She had a great time. We got pictures and everything, so it was fun. For Kalia Johnston's family. I got a badge from a soldier. Oh my gosh, look at that. It was a special day. Besides the heat and the 40 minute walk, I thought it was awesome. The girls loved it. Um, everybody was super friendly. And they're thrilled it's back. Hey, there's plenty of space. It's not shoulder to shoulder crowded. It's uh, it's very good to get out and take the kids out and have a family day. Others feeling the same way. I think it's awesome. I mean, I've never had time to go before because I was always working. Now I'm retired, so it's kind of nice to be able to have the time to sit and watch them. And as people left, it's a nice experience, actually. Their amazement continuing to soar. Everybody's morale is up because it's back. I would just say it was a fantastic day. A day they say they can't wait to experience for hopefully years to come. I'll tell them I had a great time. Jay Cunningham, 12 News. Looks like a great time indeed. Jade, thank you. New at 10 o'clock tonight, two people facing criminal charges after a road rage incident ends with gunfire and traffic slowing down. Look at this unfolding this afternoon on the 101 near Shea Boulevard. Arizona DPS telling 12 News that two drivers involved in some sort of road rage incident that ended up with that crash blocking the left lanes. We're told one of the drivers fired a gun at the other. The good news, no one was hurt. Both of those drivers, though, now facing criminal charges. Tonight, a man shot by Chandler police is in critical condition. Police say this scene started with a domestic violence call at the Doubletree Hotel near Chandler Boulevard and I-10. Police say as officers were trying to talk to that man, they say he immediately started shooting at officers who then returned fire hitting him. A second person involved at that scene was not shot, but was treated for injuries. Tonight, 12 News is working to learn more details about a man now charged with killing his wife after driving his car into a lake. Goodyear police say that 35-year-old Anthony Marana drove that car into a community lake near Estrella Parkway and Willis Road Friday night. We're told that Anthony was able to get out of that car. He was taken to the hospital to get treated. Dive teams later found his wife, 35-year-old Megan Marana, dead inside of that car. Right now, Anthony is behind bars at the Maricopa County Jail facing a number of charges, including manslaughter and DUI. President Joe Biden has signed off on a $1.2 trillion bill that keeps the federal government up and running. The Senate passing that bill late last night to avoid a government shutdown. The vote coming after a months-long back and forth between both 
sides of the aisle on Capitol Hill. That bill now will fund a number of agencies, including the Departments of Defense, Homeland Security, Labor, Health and Human Services, Education, State, and the Legislative Branch. Vice President Kamala Harris spending part of her Saturday in Florida touring the former site of one of, Amer one of America's deadliest school shootings. 14 students and three teachers were killed at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Lakeland, Florida, back on Valentine's Day in 2018. During her visit today, Vice President Harris announced a program to help states allow uh, help states with laws that allow police to temporarily seize guns from people that judges have found dangerous. During the walkthrough of the building where these crimes occurred uh, is a moment frozen in time. High school classrooms. The desks are still in the configuration they were in on that Valentine's Day six years ago. That school is still closed and is set to be torn down this summer. Um, I don't feel like we've been slowed down at all. Um, I do think that there are efforts to slow down this train, but the train is coming. That is Fonnie Willis, the Georgia prosecutor who brought charges of election interference against former President Donald Trump and more than a dozen co-defendants. Willis says that her team's preparation for his case is still on track. Willis was recently under fire for a romantic relationship with her lead prosecutor, a judge determining that she could stay on the case as long as her ex-boyfriend, Nathan Wade, was no longer part of that team. Tonight, ISIS is claiming responsibility for a deadly shooting rampage at a concert hall near Moscow. 11 people, including four gunmen, have been detained. Tonight, officials say at least 130 people were killed in the attack, and that number is expected to rise. In the aftermath, part of the concert hall was engulfed in flames and surrounded by emergency crews. President, Russian President Vladimir Putin is now pledging to track down and punish those behind the attack. More than 100 people tonight still remain hurt. Arizona state officials say that the price tag from the Native American Axis fraud scandal has cost the state nearly $3 billion in fraud. According to the Arizona Attorney General's Office, it's a massive increase from the billion dollars that was estimated just last year. 12 News journalist William Pitts shows us the bill now aimed at stopping fraud that's currently making its way through the legislature. $2.8 billion. That's almost three times what we thought it was last year. Now there's a bill that's passed the Senate that hopes to keep it from happening again. In one year, more than 300 businesses suspended. Native Americans primarily targeted, brought down off the reservation for treatment that was never provided. Some disappeared. Others died in sober living homes. But our reporting found the fraud spread beyond Native American victims. Allegations of overbilling, billing for dead people, people in jail all to scam the state out of almost $3 billion. And now a bill that proposes an overhaul of the system. Not only is the fraud apparent, but also the loss of life. Every time I go home, I constantly hear stories. State Senator Teresa Hatatli of the Navajo Nation proposed SB 1655, the Comprehensive Sober Living Bill. It changes how behavioral health facilities are licensed, increases penalties, and, she says, addresses a loophole in state law where anyone can call themselves a sober living facility, not be licensed, and offer no services. My bill says no. You are unlicensed, you're going to be charged with a class 6 felony. You can go to jail, which is an arrestable offense. Arrestable and expensive. It adds a fine of between five and $10,000. Thursday morning, a bipartisan group of senators and representatives of Native nations showed their support for the bill and asked for the House to pass it as well. What she has brought forward is a very good and comprehensive bill. To me, it is problematic that this is not obviously under the law in, in certain instances, a situation of human trafficking. Navajo Nation Attorney General Ethel Branch says the fraud and abuse in the rehab system is decimating her people. They come to the system uh, very vulnerable, asking for help, and then that help, that, that trust is betrayed. There have been dozens of indictments, even sting operations to catch people, but out of the hundreds of allegations of fraud, less than 100 indictments. Are you sad? Satisfied with the level of criminal prosecution that's come out of this? I'm not satisfied. So the numbers that continue to come out are, I think it really does represent the very fact that 
We don't have accountability. We don't have documentation. Atali's bill passed the Senate unanimously. Now it heads to the House and she hopes the governor's desk. William Pitts, 12 News. Easter a little more than a week away, but several events already taking place across the valley this weekend. Today, the Salvation Army Croc Center celebrating its Easter extravaganza. More than 20,000 candy filled eggs for the kiddos. For those who attended, there was also an interactive bounce house, games, and an obstacle course. I love being in South Phoenix, and I think it's super important that the Croc Center, the Salvation Army Croc Center, is made available to people for free of cost, especially on, on days like this. And so um, it's, it's important that families are here, that they feel safe, that they can enjoy a family activity together, and um, they can really kind of celebrate Easter. Definitely looks like a lot of fun out there. We're told that this is the seventh year for this event.